If we want to shape the next generation into healthier and happier people, then we need to consider how we spend the holidays with our children. And not just the holidays in December, but this goes for any holiday that you celebrate or your family celebrate or your community celebrates any time of year. It's all about that special holiday feeling. This episode is focusing on the Christmas holiday because that's what I'm familiar with and that's what I celebrate, as well as the current group of children in my care. But these principles and practices can truly be applied to any holiday tradition, whether it's cultural, religious, or familial. Think about how we as individuals or couples or teaching teams or communities have celebrated the holidays in the past and what traditions we've had. What feels exciting about these memories and traditions? Who helped create these with you and for you? What parts of the holidays feel uncomfortable or undesirable for you? Are there parts that feel like they don't enhance children's joy or instill negative characteristics that you don't really want to instill in your children. This is the, my child's first Christmas and I'm so excited about that. But it's also got me thinking about uh, what kind of parent I want to be and as a parent, how do I want to facilitate the holiday season for my child? I'm wondering about what opportunities there are for learning and growth within our community, with our family, and with our friends. Let's dig into ways that we as parents, caregivers, and community members can help facilitate that special holiday season feeling with our children and think about ways that promote learning, growth, and opportunities for developing character traits. Firstly, let's reflect. What holiday do you celebrate and what is the center or the roots of that tradition or belief system? Is there a message there? It could be short um, and kind of broad or it could be really long and a complicated story, but is there something that is your center and your purpose for this season? Whatever it is, always remember to bring it back to that center. Whenever you're going about the traditions of this time of year or your special season, make sure you're always thinking about how does this connect back to that center belief or the roots of my traditions? You can ask yourself, does this enhance the message I want to give to my children? as you're going about the experiences or the traditions you've always kept all these years. You can also ask yourself what learning opportunities or developmental growth could happen as you engage in these experiences with children. Gift giving. Let's think about why we're giving gifts. Is it a tradition or is it an expectation? Who are we giving the gifts to and why do we feel like we need to do that? We need to do something different as a society when it comes to gift giving. You wanna teach your children how to be grateful and gracious receivers and be kind to our environment with less consumerism and learn how to give generously and thoughtfully. How can you simplify gift giving this holiday season? There are so many great ideas out there. But for the purpose of this video, I'm going to talk about three that have been on my mind and that feel like they could be meaningful for me this year. And maybe they can be for you too. The first two points around gift giving and, um, you know, I'm thinking about not only my child I have now and that this is his first Christmas, but the potential, maybe I'll have future children and setting up expectations now and traditions now so we can set up a rhythm about what those traditions look like in our life. You've probably heard this before. I'm gonna be giving my child this year um, four different boxes of something you want, something you need, something to wear, and something to read. And that helps kind of simplify and narrow your focus. So each um, of those four categories will have either one item or two or three small little items. So something you want, I got him two little small toys that are developmentally appropriate and that are going to last a long time. They're made of wood. Something to wear. I thrifted an outfit for him and got him little winter booties, which is something that he also needed. Something he needs. He is 10 months old just about and so he's eating lots of food at the table. So we need more things like sippy cups, water bottle, spoons and bowls for him, and a toothbrush. Something to read, I got him four developmentally appropriate board books. The second part of the gift giving are stockings. How many of you have stockings and do the stocking tradition? Typically that's been something we, my husband and I do for each other and us growing up that always had snacks in there and small things like deodorant and toothbrushes and um, little toys or treats as kids, but as adults, maybe a magazine. What I was thinking about instead of having, because you know, that adds up to a lot of money. Most of the time those small little toys get lost and broken and disappear. So 
instead I wonder what could be a more meaningful tradition around stockings and we came up with the idea of writing love notes or poems or finding um, some meaningful verses or pictures that we've drawn, words of encouragement or prayers. You know, my 10 month old son, he could paint a picture and with mommy and put it in daddy's stocking and he could paint a picture with daddy and put it in mommy's stocking. Or as he gets older, he can make choices around that. And we as adults can also do that. And how meaningful, we could put it, turn it into a book later or choose to recycle. But in the morning, if that's what we start with, what a great way to start our day. What will you give to others? Everybody has different rituals, traditions about gifts they receive. They spend different amounts of money and they give differently. Could you have a conversation with them about how you're going to give this year and what feels meaningful and special to you? At different stages in our lives and we all have different price points and different ways of showing love and that's okay. Another thing I'm reflecting on is are there memories that could be gifted? Is it meaningful to the person I'm giving it to? Is it meaningful to me? For example, is it meaningful for my 10 month old kid to give a $50 gift to a friend? Or would it be more meaningful than a painting he created? You know, maybe an experience they could share together? This leads me to my next point, and that's that it doesn't have to cost any money to make the holiday season feel special. Experiences that feel special but don't cost any money, doing something that's different than your regular everyday part of the rest of the year and something that's kind of special that you only do this time of year. Maybe it's something that you do with certain people or in a certain place. So here's some examples of practical ways you can make the holidays feel special.
to yourself, what do I want my children to think about when they think of the holiday season? What memories do I want them to have? And what opportunities for those memories can I give to them? And ask yourself, what expectations do I want my children to have? How do I want to support them in those expectations and in their experiences? What character traits do I want to foster in them? What am I, as the adult, capable of? Be realistic. You don't have to choose more than a handful of traditions. It'll be okay if you just choose one tradition. And you can do the same thing every year or change it up every year. I think the important thing is to continually be self-reflective as a family and as a parent and a caregiver about why am I doing what I'm doing this time of year and what is it instilling in my children. It's important to us in our own belief system or as a family unit what is realistic for us to do and why is it meaningful. I want you to think about how does it affect the children and our family as a whole.